Hey guys, what's up? So I'm here to review the new one from Master Video. I'm talking about Nurse Jill. Nurse Jill is essentially a movie uh, about a nurse named Jill who is trying to get her life together after she divorces her husband. The problem here is that there's a sadistic rapist on the loose and she's being stalked by somebody. After a few dramatic turns here and there, uh, things take a turn for the sleazy, surreal, and the weird. Now, this film was shot in 2015 on 16mm film. It was actually shot on film, which is something you don't see too often these days. And that is very, very, very beautiful. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing. You do not see uh, many films shot on actual film, especially when the film is trying to do a kind of throwback thing. Uh, nine times out of ten, it is just going to be a film that is shot digitally and they throw an old kind of grainy filter over it. With this film, this is legitimately a film they shot on film and purposely kind of messed up here and there to give it that old school look. It was released late 2016 uh, by Master Video and basically this film is... Uh, a very interesting, kind of nightmarishly beautiful tribute to silent films, uh, giallo films in the 70s, exploitation and horror films. The plot of the film has very much a vibe of something like, I want to say, uh, kind of like Miss 45 almost. Um, to, a, to a certain extent, it, it has a very kind of 70s exploitation and or slasher and giallo vibe. It definitely has a lot of... Uh, it definitely has a lot of kind of moments that feel direct, feel like they are lifted directly from uh, something like Black Christmas, the original Black Christmas from Bob Clark. They feel very, very um, creepy and surreal, and the film has very, very nice visuals. And it's supposed, like I said, it's it's a tribute to to kind of mid to late seventies horror giallo films, stuff like. Uh, like I said, Suspiria, maybe with a little bit of John Waters thrown in for a little bit of sleaze. And the film is shot with this interesting and kind of voyeuristic style, which I would say really, really adds to the atmosphere. Although, I will be 100% honest, I do think that the way it is shot is not for an artistic purpose or to give it more atmosphere or to give it a voyeuristic feeling. I feel like this film was shot this way because of lack of permits and budgeting issues, but when you can work your budgeting issues and the fact that you do not have any public filming permits, uh, when you can work that into your film and make the film uh, better because of it, that is a sign of a true, of a truly great filmmaker. Um, the acting in the film, at least body language wise, is good. Since there's no real spoken dialogue in the film and everything is told in the kind of intertitles, um, much like a, much like an old silent film, something like Nosferatu, uh, but this film is in color. Uh, there's no real spoken dialogue in the film, so really what you have to go off of is body language, facial acting, uh, kind of lips, trying to make sure that, like, like reading lips, trying to make sure that what they're saying in the actual footage is matching what is on the, uh, kind of intercut titles. And... It, it it it's fairly fairly solid for what for for what um they're kind of trying to go for here. It is fairly solid. The writing is the same way. Solid. The film, um, really everything from a technical standpoint, lighting, uh, audio mix, uh, camera work is is all very very good, very solid. And some of the lighting, some of the kind of use of the voyeuristic uh, kind of camera work and style and the handheld. I would almost say it's handheld camera work. Uh, like I said, really adds to the film. The music in the film is one of the big highlights. It is absolutely fantastic. And I really think it helps set the tone for the film 90% of the time. There is that small sliver of times where the music they will put in the film is still good music, but I would not say it is uh, fitting for some of the scenes. I feel like it, it felt a little bit, a little too much kind of action-packed and uh, fast-paced. I would have preferred it if it was a bit more subtle and creepy with uh, it being maybe similar to uh, like like John Carpenter's music 
the music from John Carpenter's films, I should say. Uh, although he did can compose those that, that the music for most of his films. Um, I'm getting away from myself here. The music, like I said, really, really good. Although sometimes I wish it was a bit more subtle, a bit more creepy. Uh, what there is of gore, gore effects in the film are done fairly, fairly well. Although the film is far from being a gore fest, there's maybe, I would say, maybe two scenes of blood and gore, and the rest of the film is pretty much uh, bloodless. Uh, the film, I would say, plays out very much like a kind of silent film or giallo film. Very, very slow to start. It builds up and builds up and builds up, and then you kind of reach... A moment where things get the, the, all this, all this built-up atmosphere, all this built-up uh, kind of tension and just suspense, kind of reaches ahead, and things, like I said, take a turn for the surreal, the sleazy, the 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 the, the, the just the weird, I should say. Uh, and then after those things kind of come to a head, and the film eventually comes to an a somewhat kind of bittersweet ending. Overall, I would say I really, really enjoyed this film. It is a great, great tribute, like I said, to Jalo films, 70s horror films, and uh, silent films. Although I will say this film is not for everybody. Uh, it's, I think the fact that, there, that the film is completely silent other than there's no music could definitely turn some people off. I think the uh, fact that one of the main plot points is uh, about... I mean, one of the one of the big big um, kind of plot points in the film is that there is a sadistic rapist on the loose. I think that could maybe turn some people off. It's definitely not a film for everybody, uh, but I would still recommend it if you're into this kind of stuff. It's I think it was I think it is most definitely uh, worth picking up. You can get this uh, off the Massacre Video website for like twenty dollars, and that's like the limited numbered edition. What I have here is the edition you get from Amazon.com. Which uh, is not, I, as far as I know, I mean, this one does not have any numbers. Um, does not have any kind of numbers on it anywhere. And it's not, as far as I know, it is not limited. And uh, it's still very, very nice. Comes with uh, some good special features. But it's only about $20. Uh, fairly reasonable price, I would say. And uh, I would say... Um... I would I would also like to mention that the uh, one of the big reasons I absolutely dig this film is the fact that it is completely silent other than the music. Not because I enjoy silent films, but also because I genuinely believe that that was done for a specific artistic purpose, and I do not I can't explain why, but it gives the film a very very surreal kind of quality, and that is something I can really, really dig. It adds this extra layer of surrealism over top of this already pretty surreal movie. Um, although I wouldn't say it's, uh, like, extremely... I don't. I wouldn't say it's uh, eraser at levels of surreal. Surreal, don't get me wrong. Uh, I would like to mention this film also has, a, also has a kind of look and feel to it, especially some of the scenes uh, that are shot in the city. There are some moments that very much reminded me of Taxi Driver, more specifically the ending of Taxi Driver, uh, where Travis is in the taxi and he kind of looks in the rearview mirror, he sees something and then he flicks the rearview mirror up. Um, it's it's kind, of, kind of like that. It has this very eerie kind of inner city feeling at times. And every time it did something that, that gave me that feeling, in my mind would instantly go back to that scene in Taxi Driver. Uh, but I'm starting to ramble now. Overall, I'd probably give the film a four and a half out of five. Maybe, like, a four out of five. Uh, it probably sits somewhere around eight. It, I, I think I would probably have to sit at a, probably an eight and a half out of ten. It is an extremely solid little movie. If you're into these kinds of things, if you're into 70s exploitation and stuff like that, I would definitely recommend it. It's, um... It's 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 far from uh, the best film ever made, but we rarely see films that are shot on actual film and that are trying to go for the 70s horror or the old school horror look 
it, there, it is rare that that, that, that that movies can pull that off, and this is one of them where if you were to show me this film, and other than the few moments where there are cell phones, in, where you see a cell phone in the film, uh, if you were to take that out of the equation and show me this movie and tell me it was made in the 70s, I would probably 100% believe you. Uh, but anyway, guys, this is Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews, signing off. Peace.